Again, thank you, Doctor. I'd like to thank my fellow members of the working group, and good afternoon to you all. Um, I'm one of the few members of this working group that has no professional health care experience, no <laughs> professional health care training. And so I wondered when, was asked, when the doctor asked me to be a part of this, if I was, as a former Secretary of State, supposed to come in and conduct recounts on the closed votes that these <laughs> members were going to have. Um, uh, and, and to that point, I want to say that we had very robust discussions, and they were good, positive ones, and they weren't unlike uh, the same discussions that this nation is having around health care uh, right now and we have for the last uh, several years. And, and this bill, I'm proud to say and be a, be a part of, is, is, a, is a good result of those discussions. In my role as Secretary of State, one of the things that I did a lot of was consumer protection. And in that experience, I was able to uh, bring to the table, uh, so I think, some important points regarding consumer protection. The doctor uh, just focused on one. In order to be a good consumer, in order to be a protected consumer, uh, you have to have the power and the skill set to do those kinds of things, to make good judgments, to make good decisions. The other thing you have to have is a good education. I don't mean formal education, but I mean education as a consumer. You have to know in order to make the value judgment, what the prices are. You have to know all the information. And if you think about it, as Americans, we have no, or let me say, very little information when it comes to uh, the ability to make good health care decisions. For example, any one of us could go down the street and know the price of a set of four tires at Goodyear, at Firestone, and anywhere else, and we make a value decision based on what we need, what's in our best interest, and what the or even a gas station. I don't believe it has to be any more complicated than that in health care. Now, there'll be certain emergencies that come up, and we're not going to care what the price is. We're going to have to get to the closest uh, health care provider that we can and get the services we need. But that's not most of health care. Most of our transactions are not emergency-related. And we haven't been allowed as consumers to apply the skill set that we innately have as Americans. This bill does that. It kickstarts what we hope to be a cascading or domino effect in price transparency. We require that Medicare claims data uh, be shared. So now you can know what uh, prices a doctor is charging, or at least they're receiving in Medicare, or whether they're across the street from each other or across the country from each other. And that information will drive the rest of the health care system into price transparency. And empowered with that information, we'll be able to apply our skill set, our good consumerism, uh, to our health care decisions and automatically and very quickly be able to drive down costs. And that's what we mean by a free market, uh, consumer-driven approach uh, to our very real health care cost problems. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce our last speaker, um, a good friend of mine, uh, not only a health care provider in the state of Arizona for many years, uh, but the owner of a health care uh, providing uh, um, organization, and that's Dr. Paul Gozer. Thanks, Todd.